So today I want to talk about uh, Mega Mom for Kicks and Kicks PA next release and features. So just as an overview, the two products that we're talking about, Zeo Mega Mom for Kicks is basically a uh, real-time monitor. What would you use a real-time monitor for? Well, basically what you're looking for is any problem in kicks that might cause an outage or a slowdown within the environment. And so normally you'd have some sort of monitor running. And with that monitor, you could do things like um, cancel tasks or, um, you know, you could modify some of the resource definitions that are in the system. But effectively, with Omega Mon for Z, you also have historical monitoring. So we'll show you a little bit about uh, the fact that Omega Mon keeps a bit of the history. So if you have the time, you can actually do problem analysis even after you've gotten the system up and running again. You can do, again, proactive alerting with um, corrective actions that could be taken based on that alert. So I don't know. Let's say the system is suddenly at max task, you could detect that, you could alert that, and then you could actually put an action on it and make sure that it ups max task to a certain value. So the whole idea behind a monitor is to see how the system is running and hopefully prevent some outages. Now, Kick's Performance Analyzer also has been around for a while, and it analyzes the SMF data produced by Kicks, right? And we're going to talk about performance data versus statistics data, but effectively it works on the same data that a monitor would work on, but Kicks Performance Analyzer is actually the reporter for a Megamon for Kicks, as we're going to see. And what you can do with that is, again, you could look at problem analysis as well, but it's more or less used for trending analysis and probably uh, uh, performance more so than problem analysis. So let's start with a Megamon, right? In, in the Situation with Omega Mon, right? It's been around for many years uh, since it says 1980. Uh, I guess I started in the mid 80s. So uh, it's been around from before I was around in the world of kicks. In any case, it started with the uh, classic UI interface and it's evolved from there. We can talk a little bit about some of the interfaces available today. But the idea behind a monitor is the ability to do kicks plex wide data viewing and summarization. So one of the things that you've been doing with Omega Mon is more in the world of Kixplex, right? So that you can actually start at the Kixplex level and drill down from there. So a lot of customers today are running Kixplexes. They're dynamically routing workload between regions. And so it makes more sense for you to be able to do things at a Kixplex level. Again, we mentioned historical data collection and the reporting is really done by KixPA. We have some application tracing available within Omega Mon. There's bottleneck analysis, which in Kix, PA, we tend to call uh, weight analysis, but it's why is it you're waiting? Why is a transaction not running? So you could see there's a number of features over the years they've been adding. There's task history collection, which maps very close to the performance data you would see in Kix PA. So of course, we always support Kix metrics and statistics as they come out with new releases. There's transaction gateway support if you're using Kix transaction gateway. And then in terms of the user interfaces, again, you can still use the classic UI, but the enhanced 3270 or E3270 will give you some of the newer features available today. And that's more or less an ISPF type interface. You can also use the TEP, the Tivoli Enterprise Portal, which will give you the webish one that you see down here at the bottom of the screen, and it will give you a, a graphical view of some of the data available to you. Now, one of the other things they've been working on with Omega Mon for Kicks is the ability to integrate it with other Omega Mons within the system. So if you happen to run DB2, or you run ZOS Connect, uh, there is this ability, and we're, we're doing more and more in this every day, of allowing you to go from one product directly into the other. And I'm gonna actually talk about something that literally came out last week um, that will give you the ability to go from a Megamon for Kicks directly into a Megamon for DB2 and vice versa. So again, we tend to deliver day one support with new releases, and we did that as well with um, Kix version 6.1, which came out in June, and that's why we have version 5.6.
right? Now, let's just talk about who might use Omegamon. So uh, there's probably lots of different users, but the main users are operators who are managing the systems just in general, and then Kix SMEs who are responsible for maintaining things like ensuring the production regions are operating properly, monitoring performance, and trying to avoid outages, right? But we're running into problems. There are new languages to deal with like Java. There's a changing skill base, right? We find that a lot of the older people, um, of course, are retiring or moving on. And therefore, you know, the skills base is a little weaker than it's been in the past. Although, uh, you know, there's a lot of education and training available for them as well. So anyway, the data collected by uh, Omegamon is used by several people, as we mentioned. But again, I think the main people are Kix SMEs, and I am starting to see application developers look at Omegamon for some of its data. So again, these are the features that we discussed a little bit earlier, right? Um, the ones I point out here is the real-time historical data collection for Kix resources. So one of the things you'll see when we talk about Kix Performance Analyzer is you have to look at SMF data. And generally, customers will collect the SMF data and they'll offload it in the evening. And therefore, in order to look at the data, you have to go back uh, to look at yesterday's data today. Uh, although if you use log streams, you can look primarily at the data real time. Uh, nonetheless, it makes it um, easier to use Omegamon in some cases to quickly look at some of the uh, information that's available for tasks that have just completed. We have the, again, proactive alerting, which allows us to identify problems and put out a message, and in some cases, take action to fix the problem. So we're going to see a little bit about Kix task history collection. We're not going to talk about application trace facility. There is some enhancements that came out for resource limiting, as we're going to see. But you can do things like service level analysis and bottleneck analysis. So now let's talk about the new features, because that's what we're going to address. So Omegamon for Kix had multiple RFEs arounding, uh, surrounding the functionality around program details. People wanted to see more details about a particular task and what programs it physically ran. So we want to get some uh, statistics based on, I don't know, how many times the program was invoked, uh, how much CPU it used, what the weight was associated with it, things like that. And so this is the premier feature that was released with Omegamon version 5.6. There are some other miscellaneous features that we will discuss as well. So this is the task program detail screen that has come out with Omegamon version 5.6. Now, if you're an Omegamon user, you would have seen some of these other tasks in prior releases. The new tab, I'm sorry, not tasks, but tabs. The new tabs is the program tab over here. Now, what you can see is it'll give you the name of a program. So this is task history detail. So this is an individual task. And what we're actually showing you is all the programs that were invoked how many times they were invoked, the actual CPU time used by those individual programs, and then the elapsed time as well. So you have the CPU time and you have the elapsed time. You also have how much time it was dispatched, i.e. how much time it had the ability to use CPU, and then how much CPU was used on the QRTCB. If you're trying to make an application thread safe, this could be quite useful, because I would try and pick out the programs that use the most amount of CPU, the number of exec CICS calls, if there are any ABNs, how many ABNs, right, that particular program had, and then the number of mode switches, which is also quite helpful when dealing with trying to make an application thread safe. So just a couple of notes before I just show it to you live. So the metrics are collected over a period of time, and you can see that we, we have an idea of the program order that was invoked. However, just keep in mind, it doesn't accumulate um, program details, right, until it returns from a program that it might call. So you just have to be aware that the time that it's collected is when the program is the current program for the task. Again, the invoke count is the number of time it was entered, not necessarily the number of times it was in control. And then the default, you, uh, the default view will show you this order, as I mentioned. But keep in mind, when you see a program invoked, uh, program A links to B, and now you see C, you don't know if A called C or B called C. So that's just some of the caveats. So let's just 
flipped to my live system. So I have Omegamon up and running. And if you watched any of my prior videos, I showed you how to split up your regions into individual Kixplexes. And if you go down to one of these Kixplexes, and I'll go down to my FUW Plex over there, you can see I have a number of transactions running per minute. It's about 50,000 per minute right now. And you can see I have a bunch of different regions here. Now, just to clarify what this is, let me just go to my picture over here. This is the environment I'm running. I have a TOR, which also does route logic. So the web stuff comes in through the TOR as well. I dynamically route between two different AORs, AR and A1. So I never know if the workload's gonna go here or here. Then I have a region that controls the uh, files. So the FWFR is to control the vSAM files. I have a DR region that communicates with DB2. I have an IR region for IMS. And uh, I could be routing, as you can see, between approximately six different regions. So let's go back to Omegamon for a minute. So here are my different regions. And what I wanna show you is if I wanna take a look at a particular region, I can go to my TOR and do a select, right? But this will give me a, a full screen a region overview and I can see the individual tasks running over here, right? Now, if I were to select one of these tasks, by now the task is already completed running, right? So it'll show me an empty screen, I'm hoping when it comes back because these tasks should be running sub seconds. So the first problem, oh, look at that. It actually flipped me directly into task history detail. So that's pretty good. And from the task history detail, I can actually look at programs. And so I can see that this transaction actually ran the routing program. So this was routed to one of the other AORs. Now, one of the other interesting tabs within Omegamon is the related tab. So if I click on the related tab, you can see that this transaction got routed to A1, which is one of my AORs. And then it also went to FWFR. So I can actually go from here and select one of these and see what program it invoked. It's possibly a better one to look through. So let me just go through history. So I'll do an O for history. And then I can use PF4 and I could filter. By the way, you'll see in a page or so in my presentation, you can now filter on programs as well, obviously, because we have the program filter available. And I could do a filter on the transact. Maybe it's not doing that. Click OK. There we go. So I'm going to pick one of these because it's more interesting. So you could see that if I go through programs on Flow, you can actually see that this comes in via the web. It runs DFHBA, BBLI, and then you can see this TCP list, which is the main program that it runs. You can see how many times it was invoked the CPU time, the elapsed time, the dispatch time, right? And then again, with the related tab, you'll see that I go off to various different regions. So it's running a uh, transaction BPMT, which happens to sync point. You notice that the task number is the same here. So it's really the same task. It just has two entries because of the sync point. It goes to my DB2 region. It goes to my file owning region as well. So that's what you can see in terms of the the task program details. So let me just show you one other thing uh, that just came out last week. So I'm just gonna pull up a, a place where you could read about this, right? So about a week ago, they came out with navigating directly between Kix task history and DB2 thread history. You could read through this. What I wanted to point out here is this is, you know, because we're doing the continuous delivery. So you need an APAR, which is mentioned in here. And if you click on the IO tab as part of task history detail, you now get some task DB2 statistics and DB2 times, which we pull out of Omegamon for DB2. And anything highlighted, you can click on within the screen and it will actually take you off to Omegamon for DB2. So this just came out literally last week. You could read through this article. It'll also give you the... Um, it's mostly screen prints and the resolution's not great, but you can see the PTFs that are required right over here, right? So that is something new. If I were gonna go to my system, for example, and I click on the IO tab and task history detail, you see the bottom of my screen is empty. Uh, with that uh, PTF installed, you'll actually be able to see the DB2 information and you can click through to Omegamon for DB2. So that's part of the, uh, stuff they're changing within um, Omegamon to allow 
uh, the cross communication between the tooling. So let's go back to the presentation. So in terms of task history filters, we kind of showed this already, right? The ability for you to search on a particular program through the task history filter, and that will pull up all the transactions that went through that program. So that's quite useful as well. I probably should have used that in the little demonstration that I did. Um, obviously it's case sensitive, so you gotta be careful, right? Only transaction and terminal filters are case sensitive. So of course I type it in lower case. But nonetheless, uh, you can search and it'll only pull up the transactions uh, that ran through that particular program. So that's kind of nice because depending on how much data you keep in task history, you could have a lot to search through. So now this is a program summary. Right, so think about it when you wanna look at a program summary, right? You can actually look at it by region. So you're gonna go underneath the region and you look at this program aggregation and effectively through the region summary, you can actually take a look at all the programs that were used. Now there's a little bit more data here. Uh, I clicked on the use tab, you can see the programs. Notice the columns are two through 10 of 15, down here is nine through 15 because I couldn't make the screen wide enough. So there is an, uh, an overlap between some of these columns, but nonetheless, you get an invoke count, a transaction count, again, the CPU time, uh, the average CPU time, the elapsed time. So you could see some elapsed time. You can even sort, you can see the sorting capability, average elapsed time, dispatch time. So same sort of information you saw earlier, CPU time. But the difference is, is instead of looking at it at the task level, you're looking at it at the history level over a period of time. And again, down here, you can again, see the number of kicks calls, the average and so on. Then if I were to page down, he accumulates the data for all programs used by a particular KICS region. It's accumulated uh, and passed through a CMF record. So again, we can also report on this using KICS performance analyzer. And the data is reset when the statistics for the program manager are reset. So to take you to this screen, right, which is the details of a particular program through history. Let me just do the Omegamon example one more time. And what I'm gonna do is back all the way out to the region itself. And what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna do an R, right, for resources, and then P for program summary. So R and P, and then you could see I can click on the use tab, right? And I can see during a particular interval, right? The programs used on this particular region. And then I can go down to this big one, TCP list, and I can do a history on that puppy, right? And it'll show me based on the interval collection I'm using. So this is minute by minute, how often the program was uh, invoked. Uh, the transaction count. So obviously if it's half of that, it's obviously invoking it twice. The total CPU time, the average CPU time, the elapsed time and so on. And then I can go in and select one of these intervals. And that's where you're gonna get the information you're seeing on the screen, right? So it's gonna give you the program details. It gives you the statistics over that interval. Um, there's the library it's coming from, the program usage for uh, this particular region, the definition, how it's defined, and then any resource signature if you're interested in seeing that as well. So that's what I'm kind of displaying on this page over here. Okay. Now, because this is a new feature, we also support program aggregation through situations and alerts, right? So you can actually build a situation where in this particular example, we say if the value of the program accumulation detail number of ad bands is greater than a certain number, we can put out a message. You could see program mic STRS is a bending frequently. Uh, you can also take an action on that as well. So uh, obviously we can support uh, alerting and situations with the new program feature, right? And again, I've already showed you this, right? This is the history that shows the usage at each interval. It depends on how often you collect in terms of interval collection. I have it set to a minute. If you collect it every five minutes, it'll do it by every five minutes and so on, okay? Now, the 
Control for this feature is obviously through the Omegamon global data area, but you can also dynamically change the setting, right? So you can see that's for task program detail. That's the aggregate program detail. This is to write uh, to task history and then the write to SMF, which would be required when using Kix PA. So let me just shift one more time here and then show you that I can go back to the region itself and I can do a C and then I can do T and that's where I can turn it on and off. And I see I have my right to SMF off. So if I wanted to modify that, I can just click modify and I can turn that on and I can confirm that. And now I'm writing to SMF as well. So some additional enhancements, we have resource limiting resolution for CPU increased to allow transaction limits to be set by millisecond. I think that should be intuitively obvious, but it should always been there, but now you can set it by milliseconds. So it will give you a more granular um, ability to prevent tasks from impacting the system. You could find resources within a group of regions and it's more intuitive. It has a drop down today, so you just have to try it to see it. There's some uh, new Kix policy statistics that are available, right? So that um, you can take actions in Omegamon, right? And he'll show you the statistics on those policies. And then you have the transaction uh, gateway memory statistics now available as well. And then again, I mentioned some of the integration already, right? Omegamon Kix and Omegamon for DB2. You always had the ability for a running transaction, or at least in the recent times, to go from a running transaction from Omegamon for Kix to DB2. The problem was is transactions tend to run really quickly. So unless the transaction was hanging, there was no way you could go directly to DB2 from Omegamon for Kix to Omegamon for DB2. Now it's supported in the history as well. So that was an enhancement that came out last week. We also have some Omegamon for Kix and Omegamon messaging um, uh, integration as well. So you can watch a message written in MQ trigger transaction in Kix. And then Omegamon for Kix and Omegamon integrator allows you to combine a bunch of different situations from different Omegamon products. Uh, and generate a single alert. So that was a little bit about Omegamon for Kix, Z Omegamon for Kix. Now let's talk about Kix Performance Analyzer, right? So again, keep in mind the Performance Analyzer is really the reporter for Omegamon for Kix. You already saw that you get some task history details, but one of the things I wanted to show you is why would you need a, rec a reporter, right? So you're probably wondering to yourself, you know, well, I could just look at some of the history through here and I could take a look and see, you know, whatever it is I might need. So, but I wanted to show you, let me go into one of the regions at. So this is the information on the task history status, right? So this is a file that keeps the task history data. And what you'll notice is, is the data storage size I'm using is about 351 meg, right? which allows me to capture, if you look at the primary records, about 532,000 records. And you can see that this time span that it captures is one hour and nine minutes. So the problem is, is if you ever wanted to do any long-term problem analysis, um, you've got about an hour's worth of data that you can look at. And I suppose you could make that file bigger. You can give it up to four gig, but depending on how busy your environment it is at some point in time that information will roll off. So if you wanted to do any trend analysis or performance tuning, you basically want to be able to report on the same data that Omegamon is providing for you. And that's what you'd use Kix Performance Analyzer for. So what is Kix PA? It's basically a reporting tool that looks at SMF data and produces tabular reports amongst other things, right? So it's not just tabular reporting anymore. I'm gonna show you we can stream the data into Splunk or Elastic, for example, if you wanted to today. Um, and the way it works again is it looks at SMF data. Now we provide about 250 or so sample report forms. A report form is an individual report and it is in tabular format, but again, it can be streamed to an analytics engine. And it's for performance or statistical analysis. And again, you could look at it through the Explorer or if you use that support pack, you can actually stream it into Splunk as an example.
You use this to analyze kick's performance. You can use it for problem analysis as well, right? You can try and improve kick's resource usage, and you can read through much of this on your own, right? You can increase the availability of resources. You could see usage trends. And again, it depends on the type of report you're looking for. We have over 250 samples, right? Now, anything you could do to improve the performance of kicks will overall uh, reduce the CPU used within your environment and hopefully improve the throughput of a particular application. However, I will point out that, uh, you know, fixing an application will always save you more in terms of CPU than actually uh, improving the performance of the system. But you never know, sometimes applications start to use additional resources in different areas that they haven't before, and therefore you wanna take a look at the uh, trends of things that are going on. So it's relatively easy to use. There is an ISPF dialog to build, maintain, and submit these reports. You get tabular reports, but again, you can also stream the data into an analytics engine. You can also get extract data sets for cross system work. So you could see a transaction floating through multiple regions through uh, Kicks PA, just as you could through a Megamon, right? And again, what do I use this for? Trend and capacity planning. Uh, you know, for example, if it's a vSAM shop and I'm using uh, LSR pools, I'll tune LSR pools, I'll look at file strings, you know, and I can produce a report uh, using Kix PA. And then what I generally do, and I'll show you in a second, is I use something called a report set. And a report set is a bunch of different reports that you put into a set. So let's say there's 20 reports you want to run. You put it in this report set. The advantage is, is it'll actually build 20 different reports with one pass through the data. So the advantage of using Kicks PA is you can actually build multiple reports with one pass through the data, hopefully saving time and CPU. So these are the different SMF type of records it can process. You have the standard kicks SMF 110 type one and type two for performance and statistics. You could look at logger records, transaction gateway. And again, you have the DB2 and MQ accounting. We mentioned the Omegamon XE for kicks. That's especially important for the program reporting, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. And then you have the new ZOS Connect EE, which came out also fairly recently. Now, you could feed that SMF data into Kix Performance Analyzer. Uh, you can also view log streams. So you don't necessarily have to wait till the SMF data is offloaded at night and run against the day before's data. You can actually run directly against log streams. You also have the ability to create this thing called a historical database. This is more for trend analysis where you carve out some of the data from the SMF records and save it off to this his historical database. And you could do some summarizations within there as well. The idea being, I wanna run a report to see what my uh, transaction count was on a monthly basis over the last year, right? You don't wanna go through a year's worth of SMF data. So you'll probably extract the transaction count to an, into a historical database. And then you can run that report in minutes, right? Because you've had the data already summarized. So that's why you'd use a historical database. However, today, I don't know if you're gonna use that as much as maybe you're just gonna stream the data via JSON into an analytics engine such as Elastic and Splunk, right? And we have some uh, sample dashboards that you can use and take a look at. You can also get the data in CSV format, right? So that you can import it into a spreadsheet software like Excel or use it within the Explorer. And then you can also put some of that data within DB2 so you can run SQL queries against it. And we always support formatted reports, right? So again, what is new? Well, again, there's the new output for the JSON lines. And again, today we have the support pack that allows you to use the report set called analytic, which we supply, which will stream or push the data to an analytics engine of your choice. If you install the sample dashboards, um, you can actually see it in Splunk. And we also have new dashboards for uh, elastic as well. And that is just a piece of data that we stream down there. You could choose to stream less or more. It's really up to you and what you want to look at. Uh, and you're the, since it's provided in source format, you can modify the dashboards as you want to. Now, we also have some new features for ZOS Connect support, right? So we now are able to process the SMF 
one, two, three records. And it's just showing you that we have a report set for subsystem reports for ZOS Connect. We have some extracts. We can forward that data again to Splunk as well. And we have a sample dashboard for ZOS Connect. So historically, the Kix Performance Analyzer will allow you to provide task level details, but we didn't have the program level details because nobody collected it. However, now that a Megamon for Kix collects program level details, you saw that I could flip that on, right, within a Megamon. And what it will do is it'll pass that information via the SMF 112 record subtype 202 so that you can report on program details. So if you're familiar a little bit with Kix Performance Analyzer, one of the things you will see is that a report set is one of those things you can go into that allow you to um, accumulate various different reports that you wish to run. And underneath the subsystem reports, there's a new line for a Megamon program reporting. And that's where you get to select the type of reports that you want for the program level reporting. Now, like other reports, we support list and summary. List is what uh, Kix PA refers to as a detailed report. So a list report on transactions would give you um, one record, you have one record per transaction and we would list them out one at a time. And so a list report is really a detailed report. Summary is again, a summarization, right? So we're able to summarize over an hour period of time. And again, we can report on performance data or statistics data as well. So this is just, you can pick either one. And then this is an example of a tabular report. Keep in mind, you can again push this data to a, um, an analytics engine and you can build some nice graphs associated with this. But this is a list report, right? So it's detailed. And you could see it gives you the start times, uh, start date and time, the transaction here, the task number, the Apple ID it ran under, um, the unit of work information, the net name, and the number of programs. And then down here, you can actually see the programs that were involved when this particular transaction ran. It'll give you a count, and it'll give you the details we saw in Omegamon. So it'll give you CPU elapsed time, dispatch time, the amount of time you spent on QR for that CPU, and then any mode switches, how many kicks commands, and the number of advents. So basically, this is the ability to report on the data you collect in a Megamon. So if you don't have enough storage, right, in task history within a Megamon, then you can always report on it afterwards using Kix Performance Analyzer, right? So again, it has two sections, which you just saw, right? One, which will give you the task information, right? And then underneath it, it'll give you the program level detail. And you saw it gives us basically the same detail as you get for a Megamon for Kix. So this is a program list report. And you can see over here again, the same information. There's the transaction. There is the number of programs that it actually ran. So there's one and then just some total information. And you can see again, within this list report, we're seeing the individual transactions showing up. And this is showing you several programs. And it's a, just another example of a list report. So, one of the things you can do is also summarize, right? So the whole idea of a summary report is not to see every friggin' transaction and all the programs it issued. I mean, I suppose if you were doing some problem analysis and you wanted to delve in and look at the transactions that ran and all the programs during that particular interval, you might drill down into that particular piece of time and have a look-see, right? But otherwise, you're probably looking to summarize the data. And you can summarize that data within a key sequence, right? So you, this is an example of where we're actually summarizing by uh, individual tasks. So you can see there's the transaction. There's the Apple ID it ran under. There's the particular program that we're seeing that is the summary. And so we're summarizing underneath this program. This is the number of tasks, the count and then the average CPU time, the total CPU time, and the max CPU time. So that's not too bad, right? And then you can see again with the elapsed time, right? The average total and max, you also see the min and the number of exec CICS calls, right? So the total exec CICS calls, right? And then you can see the other individual programs that were invoked when this particular transaction ran. So this is just a way to run a summary where you're summarizing the programs by task. 
this is just a different order. So this is an order by CPU, right? So you can see again, the start date, the start time, the Apple ID, there's the transaction again in the program. And you can see that we put the highest CPU first. So this is ordered from high CPU to low CPU. And again, you can see individual um, transactions and programs here. And that's just the details that go along with that selection criteria, right? So again, there's two levels of selection, task and program, and you can see the data was on the prior page.